Hey everyone, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. Hey, isn't timing everything? Yesterday I posted a brand new video with a sneak peek at version 3.0.2 and how it handles macros. Well, about an hour after I posted that, or maybe about the same time that I posted that, 3.0.2 of Audacity was released into production. And with that release came a couple of additional changes. If you haven't watched those videos yet, you ought to go take a look. I'll put a card up above here now so that you have a reference. You can click on that and go watch it first if you want to. It's there that I talked about macros in versions 2.4.2, 3.0.0, and 3.0.2, and looked at the differences in macros. Well, with the production release of version 3.0.2, some of those issues that I mentioned in that last video have changed or been resolved. Let's take a look at this screen here. I'm running version 3.0.2. Pretty exciting, I know. There's nothing in it, and uh, it's kind of hard to keep the enthusiasm down sometimes. But I want to show you something. If we go up here to the Tools drop-down window and we go to Macros, there are some changes here. You can see that now there's a Save button. It's grayed out right now, and I'll show you why in just a second. And there's a Close button. We didn't have those on the pre-release version of 3.0.2. And I talked about in the last video how you just had to close out this window and it would prompt you to save. Back in version 2.4.2 and earlier, there was a big blue OK button right here that you could click once you were done making a macro or editing a macro and it would save it for you. When that was taken away, it kind of you know freaked you out a little bit because you didn't have a save button, you didn't have a close button. That close button was actually a cancel button and that big blue OK button was gone. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in big blue OK buttons. Well, now it's back, so let's look at how this works now. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of macros in here that come with Audacity that you can't delete. You can see I'm on one of them. This one over here is called Fade Ends, and it just fades the ends of your, of your track out. But you'll notice that the Remove button is grayed out. That one and the one right below it, MP3 Conversion, both come with Audacity, and you can't remove those two. So let's just stay on one of them here and let's do this. Let's, let me open this up so you can see it a little bit better. I know it's kind of hard to see sometimes. Some of these steps get really long in here. But again, just a reminder, if you want to know what these settings are, you can either double click it or you can press the edit button. So if I double click in here, it opens up the dialog box that I'm used to see for normalizing. And these are the parameters, just like always, where I can set the parameters to normalize the track how I want to normalize it. And then once I have that, I can just hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel for now just to get back out of there. But you notice that my save button is still grayed out. Well, if I insert a command here, something new, it can be anything. I'll just, I'll do whatever. Let's just grab this one right here and let's insert that. And as soon as I insert it, the macro has changed. And now that save button is no longer grayed out. Now I can save it right here and then I can close out my macro window. In the pre-release of 3.0.2, those options weren't there. You just had to hit the cancel button, which is where the close button is now. And a little window would pop up and say, hey, hey, you want to save changes before you go? And you had the chance to say yes or no there. This is a little bit better. It's a little more comforting. You can see that now I can save it. It feels like I have more control over it. So if I go ahead and save that, the save button grays out again until I make another change. So that's good. That's one improvement. We have a save button now. We have a close button now. And speaking of close button, I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. And one more thing with macros that I showed you in the last video, but let's look at it again in the Audacity drop-down window. If I go to Preferences, and then I open up Directories, remember in 3.0.0, we had the option to make default directories for opening a project, saving a project, importing and exporting a project. Well, in 3.0.0 and 3.0.2, we have this additional feature here, Macro Output. It used to be, back in the olden days, in versions prior to 3.0.0 of Audacity, whenever you ran a macro and you had a step in that macro to export a file to WAVE or MP3 or FLAC or whatever you're doing with it, Audacity always made a folder within the directory that your project was stored. And that folder was called macro-output. And then it would, it would put that WAV file or whatever file you're exporting, it would put it in that, in that brand new folder. So you had everything bundled under one directory or under one folder. Your project was there, your export was there. Everything that you needed was right there in that one folder or in that one directory. But that's not the case anymore. Now you need to go in here and tell Audacity where you want to put your macro outputs. And it's going to put all of your macro outputs in whatever directory you choose. 
I'm not a real fan of that. I like having the portability of having everything in one directory. So I'm not, you know, I don't really like this method. I mean, I've got a directory there in my whole directory on my desktop called Macro Outputs. But as I'm working on projects, and I work on a lot of projects, I do a lot of videos, I do a lot of podcasts, I do a lot of MP3s for other things. And as I export things, they're going to all pile up in that one directory, in that one folder, and it's going to get kind of messy. I kind of need to be careful how I name my guests and sort through them because it's just going to get a little ugly. But if you choose not to uh, put a directory in that macro output line here on your directory preferences, and you export a file from your project using a macro, you're going to wonder where it went. On the screen right now, I show you the path that Audacity makes. Audacity creates these paths. If you've got Windows or if you've got a Mac, it automatically creates that path for you to store your macro outputs. So if you're exporting a wave, if you're exporting an MP3, whatever kind of file type you're exporting using a macro, it's going to go into this folder that Audacity builds automatically if you don't select a folder in this macro output line. So if you run a macro and you don't know where the output went when you did an output with a macro, this is where it is. And so you can go look there. And then if you want to, you can come back here in the preferences and you can select a particular directory for it. So hey, 3.0.2 is out. The noise gate is fixed. Some people were having problems with the compressor in longer files. I wasn't having that problem, but I know it got reported. I read it on the bug report. There's just some other bugs that were fixed from 3.0.0, but 3.0.2 looks good to go. And remember, there's a lot of other features in there that I've already covered as well. So if you're so inclined, go grab version 3.0.2 and put it to work and see what it does for you. Hey, a reminder that I do teach Audacity Bootcamp Beginner to Advanced at Udemy.com. I'll put a link to that again below in this video. And you can find me online at AudacityBootcamp.com. You'll find links there to my new podcast, to my Facebook page, and right back here to this YouTube channel. So I'll let you go, and we'll talk again soon.